Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and today, my friends, we are going to make a tanker bug with a jaw that moves. So let's get cracking. All right, friends. So the first thing, of course, is to name it. When you do, make sure you put a bug. I'm going to put my initials, and I want you to as well. And I'm going to put V6 after this because I've made one or two. So the first thing we're going to do is bring out a cube that we don't really need. Notice I'm looking at it from the front. I'm going to switch to the back. You need to do this as well. We need to put the work plane right here on this face. And then we bring out the part we're going to build with, which is the round roof. The reason we did that is when we put the work plane down on the ground, we have now got our bug aimed the right way. Click on the cube and delete it. Click on your bug and hit D to drop so that way he's not floating. And then I want you to hold down shift and stretch this handle until it says 46. When you press 46 and enter, you'll notice that this is half of it, 23. And then I want you to change the height to three millimeters. We're gonna cut out the center of this guy, which is what allows it to bend. So I want you to click on it, do control D, move the second one over and make it a hole. Let's fit view so we can zoom in on it. Hold down shift and we're gonna squish it a little and I want you to type 36. So you'll notice between this one and this one's, there is a difference of 10. Because we held shift, it goes from 36 to 18, still half. I'm gonna tell you I want you to make that 17 and then we're gonna grab these two, click align. I wanna align it to the larger one, so I'm gonna make it the master, and I want it to be centered, and I want it to be on the bottom. Notice it wasn't thick enough to cut when we shrank it, so I'm gonna type four so that that's poking out, and then I wanna move it up two millimeters. One click, two clicks with the arrow keys. Let's select all of this and group it, and this will be our bug's body. Now the next trick is to make it so it can bend. We're gonna do that with a box. When you bring the box out, once again, we are gonna hold, shift, and stretch. And then the number I want you to type is 40. 40 tall is silly, so we're gonna shrink that to four so it just looks a little bit more normal. And then from the edge of this rotation handle, I want you to go one click. Notice all you do is stay close to the middle and it snaps to 22.5. I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to put it right here on the edge. I'm going to use fit view so I can see that I'm close. And then this is kind of cool, friends. If you hold down shift and go one click to the left and one click down, it moves 10 millimeters at a time. That is a super nudge. Instead of the one millimeter we had it set for, it instantly goes 10. Notice this is going to slice perfectly. So we can select them both and hit group. Let's bring out another hole box quick. This time I'm gonna tell you to hold shift and I want you to type five for the size. With it shrunk, let's use fit view, back up a little and rotate it 22 and a half degrees. So notice it's just one click on the inside shape. Let's zoom out and we're gonna use our arrow keys and we just wanna line this up so it's gonna cut off that shape. If I hit fit view one more time, you can see it zooms in and I wanna cut this so that it's flat down here and down here. So I'm just using the arrow keys to find as much as I can cut. Notice that is gonna cut perfect. And let's test it by hitting group and making sure that we just have this nice edge and nothing dangling. All right, friends, it is time to create our jaw. We're gonna do that with a box. When you bring this box out, I want you to squeeze it down to size three. I want you to shrink it to size three and then we need to change the length of it to 25. We're gonna take this shape and rotate it 22 and a half degrees. Notice if I'm out here, notice if I'm out here, it goes one degree at a time. If I stay close to the shape, it immediately goes to negative 22.5, which is what I want. We are gonna use the work plane to drop this into place. When you hit work plane and click on that, and then press the letter D, it immediately goes to that spot. And then I'm gonna just use the arrow keys to nudge it up. You'll notice, I'm gonna hit work plane and look at the bottom, that this does come over the top a little bit. We're not gonna worry about that. I am gonna put the work plane here though, and I'm gonna nudge it forward one more to try and get it perfect. If I switch to a smaller grid, you can see I can get it right to that seam, which is what I want, and we'll trim it later. I'm gonna put the work plane back to the ground. 
and then we need to bring out the bottom jaw. Same trick, we're gonna make it size three. And we're gonna make it size three from this angle. I'll let you see that better so you can tell what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna tell you to make this 18 and press enter. Bring it up so it connects with the other one. If you stay on the 0.1 millimeter, you can nudge it right into place. And we just wanna get it so that corner connects. Let's move over to this side. You can look at it with this angle. Do your work plane and let's add some teeth real quick. When you bring out the tooth, uh, just bring it in, then hit your work plane back to normal. When you do D to drop, you'll notice it's huge. We're gonna fix that by holding shift and shrinking until we get a size four and press enter. We want this tooth to drop on this side, so we're gonna hit D for drop. Move it out to the edge. Once again, I'm using that micro nudge. If you wanna go back to your one millimeter nudge, that may be handy. And then remember, instead of four for this distance, we need three and press enter. This trick is really cool if you do control D and you nudge four clicks across and then do control D again and again, you can get your sweet four bottom teeth. We're gonna hit the work plane and we're gonna take these same teeth and jaws and we're gonna make them the top teeth. Do control D, nudge them up and then use flip so it looks the other direction. Let's grab all of those again. So you'll notice I've got it oriented so I can get them all. And if we go two clicks forward, you'll see that our teeth line up. I'm gonna switch to a 0.5 nudge because I want my teeth a little closer together. And that is how my bug's jaw is gonna work. All right, friends, it is time to make our head. And a cool way to do that is to put the work plane on those teeth we just made and then bring out another round roof. When we do this, it is aimed the right way for a head. We just need to make it larger. I'm gonna put the work plane back to the ground. I'm gonna grab this handle right here. Remember how this is 20? We're gonna hold down shift and we wanna get to size 30. Press enter, D to drop. And then we need to change it so it's the right thickness. Instead of 30, we want size three. I'm gonna drop it to the ground again. I'm gonna hit W for work plane so that it is connected to the jaw. Hit D to drop. And now we're gonna cut it off with a whole cube. If we hit W for work plane, we can bring out the whole cube already at that 22 and a half degree angle. Now when I hit work plane to put it back to the ground, if I look at it from that top right corner, you can see that that will slice it the right direction. I just need to move it into place for me to make my head, I wanna cut it right there. So now I'm gonna simply hit shift and click on that cube and take those two shapes and group them. This head now fits. If I just nudge it back, you can see it can go right to the shape, but I wanna be two millimeters out. I'm gonna make sure I'm on one millimeter and go one, two to get it to the right distance. Now I can stretch it, making sure I use the black handles to get it to the exact location for my head. And then I do wanna make sure it comes out to the front. So I'm just using the black handles to pull it out so that my teeth and everything else are arranged. I do not mind this overlap. I do not want this little red piece sticking out. Friends, as you're adjusting this, you can change your grid to whatever size you want to get it to look just like you'd like. I'm gonna make sure I've got all these pieces right here selected. And I'm gonna connect all my heads so it's one piece. And then I'm gonna hide it for a second as I round this part up here. So we're gonna round this with a tube. Friends, when you bring out a tube, make sure you make it round. And then we're gonna simply bring out a whole cube and we're gonna slice this piece like this. So I'm just making sure it's large enough. When I group those two pieces, notice it gives me this nifty curve. Now I can zoom in on this and I'm gonna just drag that curve to the exact way I want it. I'm gonna do fit view so we can see this better. And I'm just getting this curve so it's gonna cut in there just the way I want. You can stretch, manhandle, whatever you need. And then when you're happy, turn it into a hole and check it out, that's gonna slice that off really nifty. I'm gonna group it all, and boom, our bug body is built. Friends, let's do show all and group this in one piece. 
by clicking the group button. Let's do control D, switch to our large nudge. So I'm gonna go back to one millimeter and I'm gonna do shift nudge so it goes 10 at a time with that super nudge. And let's click fit view to zoom in on this one. And we need to cut out this piece right here. The coolest way is to put your work plane on this edge and bring out a whole cube. Set it close. Change the thickness to four and press enter. And then we can also set this to five and press enter. We need to push it in. So it's gonna cut that. I'm also gonna use the arrow keys to nudge it up. And then it's too tall. I don't wanna cut into the teeth. So notice how I set that to cut just close to the teeth. And friends, that's all you need for your second layer. Let's do work plane and select it all and do group. And after a moment, we will have it in place. Now the first one, remember, was three millimeters thick. This one we want to be two millimeters thick. And this is gonna be a gap that allows this to actually bend when we're done. I'm gonna change the color so that you guys can keep track of which is which. We're gonna do Control D with this one, and we're gonna move the duplicate up above. And then we just need to make a few modifications over here to wrap this up. First, I'm gonna make the whole thing four millimeters thick, and I'm gonna change the color so I can tell it's different. So we've got three, two, and four. Fit few to zoom in, and friends, now we just need to connect the head to this bottom base that squeezes. This is so cool. If you put your work plane here, and bring out the box, it'll be in the perfect location. We need to make it four millimeters thick, and then you need to nudge it into place, which I'm just doing with the arrow keys. And then you wanna push it to the back of this. So remember it was four millimeters thick. If I do control down arrow, that's one, two, three, and four millimeters to line it up perfectly. At this point, I'm gonna put the work plane back on the ground, and if we hit D, it drops into place. And then remember, this part is four millimeters thick. So if we press enter, that's the right size. Notice it moved up. I'm gonna just hit D to drop it down. Mine does not connect all the way through, so we're gonna fix that real quick by putting the work plane on that flat piece. Changing my nudge to point one, and then I can just pull the cone till it connects, Notice it is not popping out. It does connect up here, and it is perfect. Work plane back on the ground. If we select all this, our bug is now built. We need to come down to our initial one and put an eye on it. Bring out a circle, make it so it has a lot of sides, and then squeeze it down to the size you think is cool, and place it wherever you want on your little bug's head, and hit group. So to build our printable bug, we're gonna do five layers. This will be the outside layer. If we hit work plane and set it on top of this layer, this will be the next layer. I'm gonna do control D and I'm gonna do drop. And then I'm gonna just drag it close. If I do select those two and I do a line and I choose the back bottom, boom, it is perfectly in place. Now we need to put the yellow one on top of this. So once again, it's work plane and D for drop. I'm gonna drag it close and then I'll align it when I'm done. I need to put another pink one up here. So it's work plane, D to drop. Once again, I'm gonna drag it close and align afterwards. And I need a green one on top of this one or whatever color you chose. So I'm gonna do work plane and then friends when we do control D and then D to drop you can see that our bug is all stacked up. Notice it is not aligned perfect. We're gonna fix that by clicking on the back edge and telling it align. And I'll look at this from a corner and I'm gonna also set them up to align to the back. Alrighty friends, so there is our awesome little tinker bug. Friends, I wanna customize this real quick so it has a name on it. I'm gonna put my work plane under the base. I'm gonna bring out the text. And when I bring out the text, I'm gonna put my initials. If you want caps, remember you need to type caps. We're gonna make it a hole, and then we're gonna shrink them so they fit by holding shift. You wanna make sure it fits on this back piece, and then this is super important. We don't wanna lose much strength, so we're gonna type 0.5 for how thick it is. 
I'm going to choose zoom in so I can see it better. I'm going to move it down into place. I'm using the arrow keys. You'll notice I have a 0.1 nudge. I'm going to switch to 0.5 nudge. And when I do control down arrow, it sticks in. If I use these black handles, I can stretch it out to the exact size I want. And then at that point, I can grab my bug and group it all. When you're done, you'll be able to see your initials cut into it. And my friends, you are ready for 3D printing. To get it 3D printed in my classroom, of course, you need to hit export. We want the entire selected shape. When you hit STL, you need to put it in the STL folder. Remember, it is in our quick access. And if you have a color you are wishing for, make sure you type it. I cannot guarantee the colors, but if I do have that color available, of course, I will use it. Friends, of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you got a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.